DualSense Edge is a controller for the dedicated gamer. This is no more evident than the not insignificant price increase it has over the base DualSense $65 or $70 price. It does offer a substantial increase over that base controller with modular and replaceable parts and customization, but is that all worth the cost of entry? Well, right out of the box, you get a sturdy premium clamshell case finished in white with the PlayStation logo embossed on top. The controller itself is identical in size and design as the base DualSense, but does offer some cosmetic and bigger functional changes. The center touchpad is now also black, embossed with tiny PlayStation button icons to ensure you never forget that this is a PlayStation controller. Gloss black is used on the analog stick covers, which is removable and potentially replaceable in the future, helping give those controllers the edge. The design cues also cover the D-pad and front buttons, which are now black and white mix, as opposed to the white and grey of the base white dual sense. Side by side and in hand, they feel practically identical with the same size, layout and weight. Now this is because the same rechargeable battery is shared across both and the shell design itself, something I will get to later in this review. Inside the hard plastic case though, you get the controller itself, a long braided USB-C charging cable complete with a locking clamp when in wired mode, stopping any unfortunate snagging and disconnect in the heat of battle. The core of this controller's design though is within its modular construction and customization. Three types of analog toppers are included, with the default being the sunken head you get on the base DualSense, followed by a low and high convex for those that like the contoured feel they offer. They are dimpled to stop slip and sweat getting in the way, disgusting I know, but a reality for longer sessions. And next to these are two rear controller choices, or paddles, which can simply be popped out into the rear and left holes at the back of the controller. The two choices offer a paddle design, similar to those in cars for shifting gears and perfect for the racers amongst you. And the other is more of a fin or button. These can be mapped within the operating system's new menu to assign whatever you want to them, from duplicating other buttons on the controller or brand new functions to extend the amount of input options you have over that standard DualSense controller. Next is the replaceable and modular element of the design. You can simply pop out that front latch which has a release lever at the back and my small first niggle is that lever is quite small, the button is tiny, it can be quite cumbersome to get your finger in, push it to the left and then it pops the front off. Once it is popped off, it's very simply a case of just lifting the front cover over and then there's two little metal levers either side of the analog sticks, you push them up which releases them and then they slide forward. Now, although you don't need to remove the analog stick to replace the toppers, this might be the easiest point to do it because it doesn't damage the controller by pushing down if you are a bit heavy handed. The other thing here is if you do have a broken stick, you can simply buy a single £20 replacement and slide it back in with a simple connector. These controllers still use potentiometers, so there is the risk that stick drift could still present itself. So it depends on how heavy handed you are or unlucky, it could still happen on this new controller, which means you've only got to spend 20 pound on a new analog stick if it does happen. And wrapping up the customizable options on the controller itself is the haptic force feedback triggers. They have three levels of play now, clicking them on the left or right independently with long, medium or short offering a hair trigger or a long trigger for shooting games or even more control in driving titles. The refinement is added further by those same embossed logos that are on the top also being on the L and R2 triggers which has a little bit more feel under fingertip and stop slippage which the smooth base DualSense one does actually feel quite different once you jump back and forth. Last but by no means least on the controller itself are the dual function buttons under the analog sticks or FN buttons. These are directly linked to the updated OS that now supports the edge allowing you to customize, tweak and control it which we'll dive into next. Now the latest update dropped for all PlayStation 5s as review hardware was being sent out, so ensure you update your PlayStation 5 firmware to enable this. Hooking up your console is simple, plug the cable in and turn it on. From here the controller charges as fast as the standard dual sense and then it will work wirelessly from here on in. You can also choose that wired option from the menu which is where that locking cable comes into use. 
The menu will detect the edge and ask you to enter setup or you can go there yourself from the system accessories menu. Once here, you have a walkthrough of buttons, ranges and more. Map all your buttons as you wish. Change to Japanese format and swap the X for the O. Make R2, L2, assign paddle buttons, change to your heart's content. You can set the range of the left and right triggers independently or combined, both on the pickup and drop off of pressure, assign prefix speed and range of both analog sticks independently or tweak your own and even set the dead zone. So this is a key area and it brings me back to those sticks and the potential meter design. This is a dead zone range as it can also be used to extend the life if one of your sticks does start to drift. As the reason is the resistance fades or becomes unbalanced within the wiper and thus one side will present slightly higher voltage making it appear the stick is being pushed and therefore detecting movement. Now by pushing this out you can resolve it to a point by extending or altering the bias of center. As these are a modular design Sony could even introduce a whole magnetic design replacement in the future which although not 100% devoid of stick drift and let me be clear I've never had it on my PlayStation 5 controllers but I have had it on others including the PS3 it is significantly reduced on the hall design and it's less likely to happen with a longer lifespan. But obviously that will cost more than the $20 replacements or pounds that are available now. Again though, this is just a possibility and not anything PlayStation have announced. Once you have your configuration set, you can then assign these up to three profiles and that adds up to four in total with a default being as the controller is shipped. Once assigned here, you can then hot swap between them at any point in the game menu, whatever, using the combination of the FN button either side and either one of the four face buttons. Zero is profile one, X is two, square is three, and triangle is default. As you switch, the operating system will pop up to tell you which is selected, and also the controller lights themselves pop up. One is default, and then two, three, and four. If no profile has been assigned, it will then flash on the pad showing you there's no profile and actually say the same on the screen. Holding the FN button down will bring up the menu, and using the D-pad with a headphone connected, you can also adjust the sound, voice, and more, making it very quick and seamless to change profile sounds mid-race or mid-combat. Going hands-on in a collection of titles is the most important part, and ranging from the Sublime GT7, God of War Ragnarok, Returnal, Fortnite and more, the Edge does feel very robust and precise, but it's not a giant leap over the bass dual sense in your hand. The vibration, the microphone, the speakers, they're all identical with the same custom vibration and light levels to choose from. Where it does improve is in those triggers with those three ranges of contact, textured buttons and the substantially improved analog stick rubber over the standard models. It has a rougher, more tactile feel under your thumbs and is much thicker, meaning it is less likely to wear. Also having the choice to change those convex options as we saw on older PlayStation 1, 2 and 3 pads is also a nice touch. The back panels are great in racing games, meaning if you have not tried it before, manual gear shifting now becomes an option as it's so much easier to use. Being able to map these and all buttons across three profiles will also help those that have different requirements across game types from first person shooters, sports games or others. This is all improved by these being stored in the controller itself, so just chucking your controller into that clamshell case and going around your mate's house is very simple. The range of input customizations on the sticks and triggers is excellent, specifically around the potential on mitigating the drift issues later in its life and also customizing those dead zones and response. That said, you would need to be a very sensitive player or a professional to use all of the custom features to the extent intended and as good as they are, they will likely be set up first and then only swapped on occasion across game to game. The biggest potential benefit is to aid those with disabilities as it could allow some an easier play time, longer play time or even enable it at all with these new functions and features. A full new controller in Leonardo is already in the works though that will achieve far more in this area but it still presents a viable alternative for some. The new menu is very clean, simple and concise with a speed of setup and swapping between all very immediate. So is everything perfect then? Well, no, but we are in niggle town at some points here. The biggest, though, is the price. £210 or dollars is not a cheap cost for anyone, and you will need to know all the functionality offered here is worth it for you. 
If you only play FIFA release and a couple of games a year, then this may not be cost effective use of that money. But only you can answer that and for many it will be money well spent. It must be stated though that this is aimed at a target audience and they will know who they are. In regards to the build and gloss plastic, it can still look a little cheap, get dirty and I would assume some would prefer a matte finish or even a faux carbon fibre look, I know I would. The FN buttons also look and feel a little weaker than the price would suggest and along with the analog sticks and rear paddles, I did feel that a very heavy handed gamer or minor drop here and there could cause damage quite easily. And the final area is the battery. Being the same as the DualSense, it has practically the same lifespan, somewhere between 6 to 8 hours depending on the amount of vibrations, lights and other functions being used in the title. Again, for me, perfectly fine, but you yourself may find that a little lower than hoped. As a controller that is over three times the price of the DualSense, it does not feel three times the build quality. It is much better though, with the simplicity and quality of the sticks, the embossed triggers and touchpad, braided cable, excellent carry case, with the rear hatch being the highlight of the premium feel in both looks and play. I hope the range of the controller is extended with good sales, with more colours and styles as mentioned and more parts becoming available such as those rear paddle choices, new face plates and maybe even enhancements to the operating system menu to extend the functions even further. If you do want the very best controller on the PlayStation 5 then this would certainly give you the edge, but expect a refined, sleek and customised controller but not one that rewrites the quality or features offered in the base DualSense. More so one that enhances, improves and delivers a premium version of that with an equally premium price. And that wraps up another video for my review of the DualSense Edge from PlayStation. Did you enjoy it? Are you on the lookout for one yourself? Is this what you want or completely misses the mark? Let me know in the comments below. Remember, I am completely self-funded and independent and all of your support, subscribing, sharing and all the comments down below helps the algorithm, which I really appreciate. And I'll catch you very soon on the next one.